I, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. How you been? I'm great. You've been making like big moves ever since um, the panel I see. I, I feel like that was like the catalyst that started everything. <laughs> I feel like it just gave me so much motivation. Um, so like, what's up, CEO Dr. O's? What's up? Like, <laughs> how, how did that happen? Are you CEO now? How did that happen? Um, I, it literally was just like at the same, like me and my mom on the same day had the same thought of just like I feel like I should just you know really I don't want to say take over or anything because I didn't take over anything, but I was just like I should really like put in more effort and really step into like a legitimate role because ever since high school, me and my sister were kind of just like helping here and there whenever my mom kind of just needed it. We didn't have a specified um, position and role and responsibility. So I was just like, let me just really take this seriously. And then once I did, you know, things really like just started going really well. So like I, I saw an article that it went from making 300 a month to like 12,000. Like what's up? Let's, like, <laughs> That's crazy. That's a huge accomplishment. That's crazy. Um, I feel like it's mainly to her for like because of TikTok. TikTok. Oh, yeah, you TikTok famous too. What's up? <laughs> you over here big time. Big time. <laughs> but yeah, I just like I um I blew, I just started to build my social media following and then I slowly started to incorporate things about my business into my social media, and then that helped a lot. And then just really just becoming consistent with social media, marketing, things like that, different type of marketing strategies. Once I became really consistent with it, it just did really well. So uh, uh, did you, do you have a team right now or how is that going? Um, uh, starting off to kind of get myself situated, I did get two interns. So it was like okay. a social media intern and a graphic design one. And then once everything kind of became, you know, stable and I was able to like, know exactly what I can do and how consistently I can do it um yeah I'm pretty much really like it's now it's back to me my mom but we do have the social media the intern we hired her uh to make content for us and things like that so, so we, now, oh my bad so what do you see like you doing next with it like what's like the next big step you want to make um I, I really want to start getting into different online stores um stores that sell different people's products and things like that that's my next goal is to be able to have our products in those different stores because we're sold on a couple of different online websites a few beauty supply stores uh, and things like that so i'm just trying to scale up and then do just do way more of that and we're dropping more products this month we're I'm trying to we're trying to get away from just like skin and hair and like do we're, we're coming out with fragrances that are dupes of like really well-known fragrances that are more expensive and coming out with the $10 scented rollers. Um, so we're doing those. We're trying to get into more holistic things like selling mullein, lavender, rose, things like that. To just like to make your whole lifestyle, you know, healthy and things like that. So, so like, I know I'm like, I bought some stuff and I know like the oils in there. So like, can you tell people like what's like in the product and everything? And, and like, also like, why should they go show, why they should go buy it? Um, I think first and foremost, I think the reason why people should buy it because it's just way more cost effective. I feel like as naturals, we buy a lot of different things for our hair, like different oils that all have different things. So what we do is we just combine all of those things like the castor oil, castor oil, argan oil, grape seed oil, hemp seed oil, like all these different oils that people recommend and just put it into a butter. So that's what our hair growth, um, our hair nourishes. And that's our most famous product. That's the one that we're always selling out of. And, um, and with our skin, we put similar things, not as many things, because um, it doesn't need as many nutrients as the hair, but we uh, just make different butters and lotions and things like that. So you don't really have to feel like you're putting any chemicals, anything too harsh. I get told all the time that my skin is soft and like I didn't even realize that it's probably because of the butters, but I get told all the time that my skin is really soft. So that's why I really like the products. No, I, it really does feel really good. I actually like the product. <laughs> uh, you know, for, I was like, oh, this actually like, I like this. I, I go to um, Lulu Holistics before then. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this actually, because my mom and whole family is like Caribbean. So they're like holistics, da 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 da. They don't do the American chemicals and shit. So, <laughs> yeah. But what's your favorite product? Uh, 
honestly, I really love the mango butter that we just came out with. It's like one of, it's probably the best butter that I have used and I've tried butters from different, and I'm not even trying to say that to be conceited or to try to like <laughs> to my own horn, but out of all the butters that I've used, um, this one, we really like got the formula down perfect and it smells so good. And I get so many compliments on like the smell of it and it doesn't make me feel dry. And so we have the mango butter. Also, are you guys in stores? We are in a few beauty supply stores. We are working on getting into more. I think that a lot of beauty supply stores, uh, they just want to see that there's a demand for your product before anything. So that's why we were just like, okay, let's just get notoriety up. Let's just like get a few blogs, you know, that to publish us, maybe a few publications. And then once we come back to beauty supply stores and like, listen, this is how much we're making in monthly sales. This is the, the place, the magazines that we've been in already in X, Y, and Z. And then I think it'll be a lot easier to do those things. How's that again? Like pressing everything. The, kind of when I first started out, it was, it was difficult. Like, yeah. <laughs> already. No, it's just like, the biggest question is just like, damn, how do I get people's emails? Like, where, am I, where is everyone just reaching out to brands and to blogs and to publications, magazines? Like, where are they getting the emails? And so um, that's probably the hardest part. But Bro, All right, let me know. And I definitely will send you some emails. Kind of like from media, I know everybody's emails and everything. So after, <laughs> after this, I'll send you all that. I keep telling people, I was like, Wayne is the plug. I always say that you're the plug. And those people, I don't think people are aware of it either. I feel like you do it very, very, very low key. No, yeah, I do. I don't really, because I even like events and everything. I'll send everybody events and not go to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's dope. Everybody needs a plug. Everybody um, but plug. also, you're a creative director of this um app, uh, popcorn, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, okay. How how did that happen? What is it about, like? Um, once I realized what I actually wanted to do with my life and how I realized how great being a creative is because you get to really just expand your skill set, I realized like I'm really good at coming up with ideas and, you know, doing just creative direction for the most part. I'm really good at social media and figuring out what people respond well to and things like that. So my friend Alan, when me and my sister first started our podcast, we had this podcast called Problematic Faves. We started that in like 2019. Um, Alan, who was one of like the co-founders of Popcorn, he was also trying to develop a production sort of company. And he was like, oh, we'll help you with the podcast. So we started to do the podcast. Me and my sisters, our lives got like really crazy. So we we're just like, maybe the podcast isn't the best thing for us after like a year. But in the, in the first few months, Alan was really there for us. So um, we just developed a really good relationship and I said you know like I know he's gonna be he's gonna do something great with his life like keep me updated on what's going on with your life so when popcorn was getting ready to launch its beta he was just like yo um I just want to pick your brain and tell just tell me what you think about certain things I told him what I thought about certain things and I said I can really help you guys with marketing like I I, I know I have connections I know what social media responds well to uh, I want to help you guys and so we had a meeting we went over some of the ideas that I had and um the rest is history. That's just what happened. Is like we just we're 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 both networking across, and so we just were like we see each other. Like I see you, and then like we just connected. What is what's the app about? Like is it like a what is it's, it about? It's an app for creatives. So it's popcorn. It's an app for creatives to uh, upload their work. So it's pretty much like an online uh, portfolio in an app form. And it's for creatives to upload their work and uh, connect with other creatives. And slowly it's building up to where it's just like they're gonna implement a calendar. So you can schedule all the little projects that you have coming up. You can request people. So people will have their rates, you know, in their bio. So you can request them or you can just message them to say, yo, I really like your work or hopefully one day in the future we can work together. But if you actually wanna book them, there's like an easy straightaway process to do that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you can, and then if somebody's looking for a job, they'll be able to list like, I need a model for this X, Y, and Z. I feel like Instagram became way too overwhelming, and people realize like, I don't like my social media apps to have everything. Like, oh, yes, yeah. there's a shopping thing now. There's, I, don't, I was like, it turned into TikTok, Snapchat, all these. I'm like, what is going on? But I feel like 
me. So that's why popcorn is just like, it's it's breaking it up and saying like, okay, let's just like, we'll be the place for creative. So Instagram, so like you can actually use your Instagram for what it was originally meant for to just like share pictures of your life and your friends and things like that. So I heard you're also going getting into film. How's that, how's that going? It's going well. I'm in the learning stage. Um, I think that a lot of people don't know that when you sign up to a, an acting agency, they think that you're just like, just jumping into um, acting and into roles. And you can, if you've had previous experience, but I signed with my agency and they knew like, I, this girl didn't have any acting experience. Like I did some background work. So um, I'm in the, the learning stage, the taking acting classes stage, and they're kind of really helping me develop. And then I'm going to start, you know, doing a lot more castings and stuff. I've done a couple and they were okay, but, um, yeah that's where I'm at with it but I'm actually excited about it I'm really excited to be in this stage I feel like so fresh like I'm just learning a lot where are you taking acting classes at and I do this online acting class called the acting experience I can't um the name of the acting is just like getting away from me but it's called the acting experience and it's really good um I even got to like act for a casting director for NBC because she was like a substitute I guess teacher in my <laughs> acting class and she said that I had a really good British accent I said <laughs> uh, are you really watching Love Island thank you so <laughs> oh what's your favorite season of Love Island the one with Molly May and Tommy oh and Amber Gill and all them and, and uh, that, uh, that season was in OV yeah that, that season you watched Temptation so, Island? Huh? You watched Temptation Island? I haven't watched that yet. Yo, you gotta <laughs> watch Temptation Island. No, season two, of, I would go to season two strictly. That season is ridiculous. Like, these people are wild. Wait, know. is that the show where they're not allowed to have sex and kiss and all that stuff unless they're giving permission? No, it's like a show, like, they're like couples. And then, like, there's like four couples that go into this, like, um, what is it, a villa? And then um, they separate and then like the boys, like, like they get with like a bunch of girls. Like, so they're like stuck in the villa with like other girls and then the, the other girls and then the couple, the, the women or whatever are like stuck with the boys and the other, like a random boys and the other side. It's kind of crazy. And then like, no, but season two is, season two is crazy like i'll just go straight to temptation island season two and it's like ridiculous. okay i'm gonna watch that my second favorite season of love island is the very first season i was like oh this show is so entertaining like i thought it was at first when i heard i was like oh you guys release episodes five days a week that's od ain't no way i could watch this five days a week but i was, yeah no but no temptation island i'm telling you that show, i was like what? like the things that just go on it's just like a it mm. just creates chaos so for no reason at all but um, what are you, what are your other shows you'd be watching? You have to, like, um, Snowfall, Snowfall. Jameson, okay. Snowfall is that show? It's probably like the best written show on television right now. It is so good. Nah, that that show's lit. I like that show. Really like Snowfall. Do you feel like you have to keep up with a lot of different TV shows? Like, I, I had to. Like, I still I gotta watch like four movies this week. <laughs> And I still got, cause I have like interviews. So you got to watch the movie and then you got to interview them. And it's just like, and I really want to go to the beach today. So I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> but no, I like, and no, it's really fun though. Like you get to watch movies and everything way before everybody gets to see them. And da, 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 da. Do you purposely take notes while you're watching the movies? No. <laughs> you just go into the interviews like no i literally like all my interviews are just free i just ask them what i want to ask them because like there could be a chance like you just watching a movie and you just don't like the movie and but you like the person and then you're like okay cool i just want to like just ask some questions okay i'm asking questions about the movie i'm like yo this movie kind of trash i'm not gonna be interested <laughs> so i just usually just go in there which interview but, are you the most nervous for most nervous for I don't know. I, in the beginning, I was nervous. Uh, I don't even know. It's so many. I was in the beginning. I was hella nervous. I'm not going. <laughs> I was just nervous in general. Uh shit. I have no idea. There's Angela Bassett. There's Ooh. Erica. Erica Badu is amazing though. Cause I was like hella nervous, but she just made it funny, like like a homie vibe. And then after that interview, honestly, everything became easy easier for me. 
she seems like a fun person to interview after that one um that she did with academics she was like who do you look like oh, no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the mouse with Tom and Jerry. <laughs> no no i think i asked her a question because the movie was called like what men want or something and I was like, what does a woman need? And she was like, peace and quiet. And the whole like carpet was dying. I was like, <laughs> no, she's like something else, but she's amazing. Um, well, TikTok, what's up? How, how did that, I don't know how to use TikTok. I feel like the, I'm the only person on the panel that doesn't know how to use TikTok and I'm just confused. Like, I feel I like you have to put a lot of work into that. Yeah, I definitely think that it becomes easier as you go. But in the beginning, you're just like, how do I like, edit like I don't even understand how to use these sounds like, it's just actually very confusing when you first especially as a millennial like <laughs> it is very confusing but then I was just like let me try and find an easier app to up to like edit and then post the TikToks just upload them and that's how I started off and then I slowly got comfortable using the app itself but um yeah like TikTok I think a lot of people, especially millennials, I feel like we have a very uh, unhealthy relationship with video content. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, the TikToks I, I be seeing are like so dope. That be like, I don't know what I'm about to make that's like dope. But I, mean, I be seeing like the dopest TikToks. I'm like, yo, I don't know what I'm gonna make to like be like, oh, this is actually. I be seeing some. It's like it's really like one of the dope creative things I've seen in the past couple of years. Yeah. No. Like I feel like people use TikTok like the way millennials use, Gen Z uses TikTok the way millennials use Twitter. So like they're not necessarily, cause you know how like with um, Twitter, like some tweets might, you might get retweets on and some you just talking to yourself, not a single soul in your engagement. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just okay with that. But I feel like with millennials on TikTok, they're just like, I feel so uncomfortable because if I post a video and people don't like it, I'll be over it and stuff. And, and Gen Z just be like, literally using TikTok like it's Twitter just like whatever thought that they like whatever thing that annoys them throughout the day whatever they'll just quickly just record and you know and that's kind of how I did it in the beginning in the beginning I was trying to approach it like a YouTube channel and so like the first one I made like I made like a cooking type of video and then I made another video like reacting to somebody else's video and then I made another video um there was just another video I did when the don't rush challenge. So me and a whole bunch of Nigerian girls did the don't, don't rush challenge. And then I posted that and none of those three did anything. Like nobody cared. And then <laughs> finally, the fourth time, mind you, I downloaded TikTok in February. And then the video that blew up um, was in like August. And then so finally I posted like a series of three videos with me, my sister, and my dad, and those just blew up. And like the third one I posted with my dad, that's the one that went, got like over a million views. It has like maybe like 5 million at this point or something like that. And ever since then, like I got a whole bunch of followers and then it just kept on. And then every video I posted, it was just like, boom, like I do a huge jump in numbers. Um, and even now it's just like every video I post, it's just like a huge jump in my follower account. Well, how does it like, how did you like feel like when you wake up and like the next day, like, yo, I, I did some interviews and they gone crazy now that like, yo, what the hell is going like, and then you get hit up by everybody. Like, so how does that make that? Like, what was that feeling like? It felt dope. I remember when I posted the ones with my dad and I was getting ready to like go somewhere and I just kept on going to my sister's room. Like, Timmy, I mean, Timmy, it has like has a thousand likes right now and then i'll go back like five minutes later like simmy it has two thousand likes <laughs> I just kept updating her every time like i would check it and and but then it got like normal to me because it was just like okay every video i'm posting is doing those top of numbers now so it got really normal i don't really think the whole tiktok clout hit me until um like people who I would interact with would be like way nicer to me. Like not that they were mean to me or anything like that. <laughs> oh, what? What do you mean? Way more friendly. <laughs> what do you mean? Like they would, how does that, what do you mean? I just feel like the people who I interact with, it will be always be the first thing that any pretty person that hadn't seen me in like a little bit of time, the first thing that they bring up is like, oh, I see you on TikTok, I see you. <laughs> really see you you're really out here like <laughs> that's what everybody says now every time they see me and they hadn't seen me in a while and then um then I started to and then like people who were mutuals of mine or friends of mine they would talk about my TikTok and and their friends would be like oh my god you know her 
And that would happen with my sister too. Like, you know, Simi, oh my God. And I was just like, do people really like, like TikTok people really got clout like this? Like, this is how they get treated. And it was just a lot of situations like that where people would just be like, yeah, like, can you show up to this? Because my sister's going to be here and she just loves your TikToks. And she loves what? you so much. Like she would be, she would die if she met you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's crazy, yo. TikTok? That's okay. crazy. You're like the Beyonce of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really crying. Once I hit that million, oh my gosh, I'm not going, I'm going to really throw myself, I'm going to buy myself a cake. You know, girl, I never really understood it when people get a million followers and they'll buy themselves balloons and a photo shoot and all that stuff. And I'm like, maybe I might be that extra just because. That's a lot of people. Like, that's, <laughs> like, yeah. that's a lot of people. Do you like have to feel like you have to be like more responsible because there's like so many people like watching you? Absolutely. Absolutely. For real? I, yeah, I feel uh, like. I don't relate at all. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, even a parent be like, oh, my child is watching the interview because I'm like, why is he watching that? This is not for, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> I do. I mean, I still cuss and things like that, but um, I realize like the internet isn't really, at, isn't really like a forgiving place. And then on top of that, I think I like, so like I have a lot of mutuals. I'm friends with a lot of the popular black creatives on TikTok, right? And we'll, have will only post it like to only friends so only your friends can see the post and so often like their mental health is not in the greatest place because of all of like the hate they get and yeah they get love all the time but constantly having to defend because like some people on tiktok will follow you with the thought that like just like this is my attack you <laughs> Like, like not even that they'll just want to attack you they'll follow you and then think that from that point on every single thing that you do and you say is supposed to align with their morals and it's just like why do you think that just because like you like me because I posted a funny video with my dad that you're gonna agree with every political view I have or every like you know so even I'll be like engaging in conversation on, on somebody else's video and I'll comment on something and people be like wow I was such a fan of yours I usually love your content but I had to unfollow and I'm like I don't know you I physically cannot care like I can't because I have no idea who you are you know you people know feel so people. entitled these days I I've <laughs> So I be seeing their stories, talking. their friends only talking about like, oh, I'm so tired of this app, but I'm so tired of this, I'm so tired of that. And I was just like, you know what? I think I'm just going to keep a lot, like keep my profile lighthearted, not get too deep into certain situations. A lot of these serious conversations and serious topics, like I would rather have them in person anyway. So I'll engage with people. I'll engage people with people privately on my, you know, with friends only story, uh, TikToks. But other than that, like, I just don't, I just don't care to share all of that with the world because I don't think the world is that nice and forgiving. You should like, do it anyway. Like, you should do it anyway. Because, like, me personally, I'd be, like, it's either, like, I'll either, like, if it's criticism, I wouldn't really care. If somebody's, like, oh, da 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 I'd be, like, okay, cool. And then somebody's, like, this, uh, say, like, say somebody say I'm trash or something, I'd be, like, okay, cool. And then somebody's, like, you're trash because da 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 Then I'll probably take that consideration because, like, yo, you really put that in your day. <laughs> <laughs> to like f- tell me why I'm trash and this reason da, da da da, and then it's just you should just keep doing what you want to do with this. It. Like it, you're not gonna see these people anyway. Like <laughs> I did make a second account and I said okay I'm gonna be posting like my deeper like more personal things on there and I just haven't gotten around to it because like when you once you run so many social media but once you are to the point where you're running like I would say six separate social media accounts on like. It just gets really hard to like. Yeah, team. That's just, no, no, no. You gotta get a team. No, that's that's crazy. You also, um, where other account you run? I saw it on. I forgot. It was uh, Am. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Amper or something. Ampo. Yeah, yeah. So they do, they're the ones that do the shot pro style gel, shining jam. Like any person, any like black person that does hair, get, does their own hair, knows exactly the brand. So I I grew up knowing Pro Style Gel. It's always like the black gel that came in the black gel. <laughs> and all the black women used it. And so um, it's because of Clubhouse. I was on Clubhouse and- How do you like that? I hate Clubhouse. I did it one time and I was like, yo, I'm never using this app. It's one of those things to where I don't necessarily enjoy being on it. I enjoy the results that come from being on it. 
So I force myself to still try to engage on at least once out of the week, I try to go into a room and say what I do and get advice, you know, just, just getting advice for anything on any of the like hustles that I have going on right now. And something always, something positive always comes from it. So I suck it up, but it's not the, it's just, it's just really, really hard to enjoy it long-term once like you can't control what other people do and what other people say on the app. And sometimes you're just like, you're talking entirely too much. And I just want the next person to talk. And I feel like that's the feeling I feel a lot. It's just like this person is talking. Now we're on there. Has somebody made a clubhouse about you? Cause somebody made one about me. They made a clubhouse room about you? Yeah, I was like, what? what? But no, I don't know. But like, the like, I guess like there was like three people or whatever. They made like a clubhouse about it. And then like, I heard about it. Cause like somebody was like, yo, we just had to cuss out these people because they were, t- <laughs> I was like, what? Because, like, a lot of people know me, like, even in media, like, I look out and send them events, da 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 like, I'll send them whatever, or, like, hey, whatever. So they're like, yo, like, why would he even talk? <laughs> they were just mad and everything. But I was like, yo, I was like, I don't even go on here like that. You're so unproblematic. <laughs> no, I don't even, like, I, don't, I really, like. <laughs> about you? Oh, I need to chill the fuck out because people no. I literally just go to do my work and then go hang out with my nephew or something. Like I'm not even like, yo, I don't really do the Hollywood networking thing, whatever. I just do my work and dip out. But no, I was like, yo, no, there's real, real haters. Yeah, like, I'm like really trying to think of like what exactly they would have to. Say. No, they were just talking. They were just like, oh, he's not like a real journalism. He shouldn't have his own company. I said, well, I started my shit and it's going. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Some haters it's not my fault. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you got this journalism degree, you should be past me. Then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but no, there's like you're unqualified or that. I was like, okay, cool. But I was wondering. I think Michaela, I just had her on. She's like, yeah, people make clubhouse about her too. I believe. <laughs> well, damn. So I was just wondering. So I'm sure somebody probably did it about me too. Cause I'd be seeing people's names in the headlines. Like, yeah, I just be seeing it. I said, why would you take time of your day to just make a clubhouse about somebody? And talk? I said, I couldn't do that. Like, I just don't respect it. Cause I'm just like, if you're going to make a clubhouse room about somebody, that person should be in that room. Like, at least invite me. The part room. Were you there in time? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. That one was entertaining. That one was messy. I heard he went and cussed out everybody or something. I don't he did not like to hear the criticism people had of him at all. But at the same time, people also were kind of like not being constructive. So, but I'm like, at least he was here to like, he tried. But then I- oh, He rubbed me a wrong way after the um, documentary he had. Yeah. I was like, why are you talking to your team like that? I'm like, that's so- <laughs> Same. I was just like, is this documentary supposed to make people like you more? Because it really did the opposite. Like, I didn't dislike you as much as I do now after watching this documentary. No, I was like, really yo, I didn't even know about that. And then, I, like, he kind of like blamed cheating on his wife because he wasn't with his his he wasn't with his friend. Yes. I was like, what? Did you, what? <laughs> like, I was just like, I'm like okay. I don't know who signed off on this. I don't know who. I don't know how many people had to watch this before it finally got published on Netflix. But this was like a very bad PR move. Absolutely no character development. <laughs> what is going on here? I was like, yo, I, was like, I really do not like him. I thought, I, I used to be like a Kevin Hart fan. I was like, yo, people are like, he's not funny. But okay, cool, it's cool, whatever. And then I was like, yo, what is wrong with this dude? Yeah, I was like, you don't really take accountability for a lot. You're really mean to your day ones. Like, mm. I was like, you, you know? cussed him out on the plane. I was like, yo, why are you tripping for it? I was yeah. like, I was like, yo, he's like, I made you, whatever. I was like, what? Yeah, Clubhouse is um, yeah, it's not the it's not the best app, but people are people are getting the bag on there. That's why I was like, I'm trying to get the bag. So I was like, what are you talking about bag? Huh? What are you talking about bag? People are getting like people are getting to like there are clubhouse influencers now. Like that's a whole different sort of type of influencer. Like a clubhouse. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know this. I'm, I'm yes, people are getting paid to by companies to do a clubhouse to, about it. To do like not not to just give them an invite to host rooms on their behalf. So if they started a club, right? Because you know, oh, that's actually smart. Very smart. I have a friend who does it. Who um, I think he recently started doing it. Well, two, uh, Tarek and Antonio. They do helping homies win. And it's a really good clubhouse uh, group. Um, they do like morning affirmations and meditations and like a lot of positive stuff. 
so yeah like people will contact them saying like you know you have a club with x thousand amount of people can we host a room use under your club name to get our more brand awareness for our brand and that's really dope dope. you have you plan on doing that um see i feel like with clubhouse i was getting like a lot of the followers and i was doing all of that in the beginning and then i'm just like damn now like people have like far surpassed me in numbers like i thought i was some shit because i had like 400 followers on clubhouse like oh i have four and then all of a sudden people have like thirty thousand and like twelve thousand and all these crazy numbers and i'm just like i don't know i feel like people talk too much on there like even when i was on there and people were doing introductions like i my introduction was like okay quick and short less than a minute people on there for like 20 minutes i'm like you touch your whole life story i thought we just do it yeah some a lot of people are long-winded and i think the part that kills me is when they are well aware that they were long-winded that entire time they're like sorry and then that was a lot and it took up so much time sorry and i'm just like so you were aware you just made all of us sit through this no yeah it was like it was supposed to be like an hour it ended up being like four hours i was like yo i'm never doing i I deleted the app right afterwards (laughs) I i hate when the moderators get power like power hungry it's so annoying. It's so annoying. It's very, 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 very annoying when they get a power hungry or if they like have a friend that's that they also made a moderator. That friend is talking to people crazy, but then like they let their friend talk to people crazy. But then if somebody tries to talk to them crazy, they're like mute them like, hey, what we not gonna do? We gonna respect each other. I hear that every we gonna respect each other. We not gonna cut each other out. No, the moderators are cool for mine. I'm not done, but it was just like, yo, why are y'all telling that? Like somebody's like mentioning when he was seven and then that. I was like, huh, what? What are we doing? <laughs> it's just an introduction, like what you do, da da da, and then go on. Like I don't know. Yeah. I told yeah. his whole life story. I was really just in there, like, yo, this is not gonna end. And the introduction took like an hour. I'm like, yo, how? There's only, yeah. there's only like six more other people on here. Exactly. I just do mine professionally. I just use Climate Pals just for professional things. I don't do it for anything else. Like I come, I go into every single room with a clear objective. And then once that objective is met, I just dip out the room and I just close the app. And then I'm done. What other apps you be using? You'd be using YouTube? That's my app, honestly. YouTube, I use it for business more than anything. Like I used to, when I was younger, I feel like my, I have, <laughs> this is like my journey through YouTube. First, it was like funny comedy videos and music. Then, um, and then like the makeup tutorial era came in like 2011, 2010, around that era. And then so it was just like makeup tutorials and hair tutorials all the time. Then it went to, in college, just like help with like chemistry and physics and all my, and, like, <laughs> and it was just like a hella educational videos. And now it's all like, Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, all these different sorts of like learning how to do ads and SEO and stuff for like the business. And that's all I use YouTube for now. Unless, I, unless I'm like doing production with my mom and then we'll, we'll just let music videos play while we do production. And those are the two things I use YouTube for. Also, well, how's modeling going? Like you were in Vogue, like how was that? I was, okay, I was on Photo Vogue, so that's, like, Italia Vogue's website, because I feel bad, because I feel like a lot of people think that I was, like, in the magazine, which, may, hopefully one day, but I was not. You got the, the logo on there? I would have just went with it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I wrote them, I'm like, the logo was on there. Did you Photoshop? I said, no. <laughs> if I go on the website, will you be there? to like, yeah. So they're like, okay, so you was in Vogue. That's that's counts. Right. That counts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, with modeling, mm. I have a very love hate relationship with that profession. Why do you have a love hate? <laughs> is it a what is it? Yeah. Mostly industry. Let me like, like if I'm being like the most honest and like vulnerable <laughs> with myself. I think what really motivated me to do modeling more than anything is trying to get out of like that the rat race of like working all the time doing something that you don't love doing something that you you know don't even enjoy and trying to like and then like like thinking about your life is just like oh my god this is what my life is gonna be and like in the last few years of college that's exactly how I felt like that's like that's how I've been feeling like since probably I was like 23 and so it's just kind of like and I saw other people being able and I had been modeling since I was 16 so it's not like I was like never actually loved it at a certain point or liked it at a certain point I always liked it 
but what made me want to do it as a career is like I was just trying to escape that rat race it's like I have no desire to live a life where I just have a nine to five that I hate then I come home and then I come home and I'm miserable and I'm too tired to work on anything else that's gonna bring me joy but then um I realized like it's just not as fulfilling and um I don't think that even looks wise I feel like I'm not necessarily the direction the modeling industry is going in. So I think that also that I like really like had a, a negative impact on my self-esteem. And a lot of models that I know too have like problems with their self-esteem because of when you do a job that's 100% dependent on what you look like and people are only judging you based on what you look like, super hard to be, to feel fulfilled. So once I started getting serious with Dr. O's, once I started getting serious with creative direction and things like that, I realized I don't want to pursue it as a career. I want to do it as a hobby. So, you know, I'm saying I love modeling still. I, I still will do it as a hobby. If somebody approaches me and it's like something that I feel like is worth the while, I'll do it. But I'm like, if I become like on Issa Rae's level, I'm going to be modeling all the time anyway. Like I'm going to be on couple of essence. I'm going to be wearing the designer clothes. I'm going to do all of those things. So why as well just like get big doing something that I'm actually going to be one proud of, two that can actually sustain me past the age of like 28 because like modeling for women has a lifespan, right? They don't like, it's, it's like that gap between uh, your late twenties to your fifties. People aren't trying to model, hire models within that gap. You can either be a young model in your, your early 20s or you can be a mature model and you visibly look like a mature model with grays and like gray hair and all those things. It's not really, it doesn't, so it doesn't really sustain long-term. And um, yeah, and I just realized like, okay, well, if I become big doing all these other things, like I'm gonna be modeling all the time anyway. I'm gonna be in covers and magazines anyway, which is like essentially what you wanna do, which is essentially what every model wants to be able to do. You know what I'm saying? Get a cover of a magazine and things like that. So I was just like, I'm just gonna keep it as a hobby. I'm not gonna let the toxicity of the modeling industry, the tokenism that they show towards black women, like all of those things. I was like, I'm not gonna let it, I'm not gonna let it affect my mental health anymore. I'm just gonna. So is there like certain brands you would like still go out and work with if they hit you up? Yeah, like I would work with any brand that wants to work with me. I'm just not breaking my back to try to get signed to a modeling agency, a modeling agency specifically um and I'm not going to try to break my back like going to hella casting calls and doing all of those things like but if a brand approaches me because of like my social media and following and saying like we love your look we love your style we would love to work with you I would go I'll be enthusiastic I will be I will be professional and everything like that but in terms of me like trying to be successful just for modeling me trying to make it my main profession that's not happening but how was it like like going like how is that process like like going to a casting call like what was like your like normal routine when you had to do like casting calls and everything okay so you go into a casting call I mean so you so you wake up you have to get ready a lot of the times you didn't have um too much of a warning if you're lucky you get the casting call a day or two ahead of time and then you know sometimes you literally get it that morning and you have to you know find rearrange your schedule to get to somewhere by noon or by three and they always give you a time that's going to make you stuck in traffic like when you're done either on the way like, <laughs> yes and i'm like y'all know la is not this type of place where you can be having me come somewhere at like 3 p.m like come on <laughs> like can we do this in the evening can we do it in the morning but it will always be like sometime in the most inconvenient time where you're going to be like stuck in hell traffic um so you get ready and you have to figure out a way to like do your hair in, a, in your makeup in a way where like it's not too obvious that you're wearing makeup but you still want to like look but they don't provide like makeup artists and everything mm -mm. oh you're talking about um like a casting or an actual shoot oh so actual like shoot they provide oh, actual shoot actual shoot oh actual shoots aren't too bad um you show up and sometimes they have, have you come makeup ready. Um, sometimes they have makeup artists for you. Honestly, I would probably prefer to do my own makeup and just have someone do my eyeshadow. Um, a lot of the times I feel like they, they don't, and they never like specifically hire somebody who like knows what, how to do black makeup. They rarely do that. They usually just hire like a makeup artist in general. And then that person like tries to use the same techniques that they use for 
non-black people and it's not the same and so like usually I just be mad <laughs> when I see my makeup I'm like oh my god <laughs> so I have to like give myself a pep talk to be like okay it doesn't matter if you feel ugly you have to go out there super confident and kill it so I usually have to give myself that pep talk the few times I don't like the set just feels five times better um and you shoot um Sometimes you have to shoot in really uncomfortable locations. That's another thing I was just like, this sucks sometimes. Sometimes the, t the odds of me shooting in good weather are so slim. Like sometimes I got to shoot like and get in water. Sometimes I have to shoot and I'm just like, and it's like super windy. And it's just like, you would shoot in any condition wearing all like, like sometimes but not nothing, but just wearing stuff that's like not gonna like cover you and yeah it's just a lot and then you're there for hours sometimes it's quick sometimes you're if you're lucky it'll be only be a couple of hours it's a lot that goes on on sets but the, my favorite part is lunch like when they bring food <laughs> hands down hands down the best is when they bring food and you're like <laughs> what changes would you like to see like in the modeling industry oh just I think that it's just very unfair to black models. I think that it's, it's not, there's an, at least on the West Coast in LA, there's a lot of tokenism and not true diversity. So what they'll do is they'll say like, um, you'll go to an agency, like a girl that looks like me, right? Just like a regular looking black girl will go to a modeling agency and you'll want to get signed. And usually they'll have like one model and she's like, darker skin like darker than me like darker pigmented high cheekbone like full lips shaved head looks like straight from Kenya like she just got here like yesterday type you know so like they like they'll like have her and you're like okay so what other black models do you have they'll have one that's probably like biracial like curly hair green eyes or hazel eyes or something like that and you're like like well what other black models do you have and then it's just like well what more do you niggas need like we got <laughs> we got how you can how can you say we don't love black women we got we got a range here and it's literally just like maybe like that one that one and maybe one that might look like me and then they, they don't feel the need to like need more than that they're like for every time we have a they we have a black girl we, they they want us to send over a black girl we'll just send one of those girls but then you ask them like well didn't you see their white models and you're just like well what type of white models do you have every variation they're like we got curly hair red hair, brunette, green eyes, like what type of, what variation do you want? You want a blonde with green eyes, short hair, we got it. You want a blonde, green eyes, long hair, we got it. It's like- That's crazy. When it comes to like white models and or non-black models, there's like true diversity. You don't feel like just like the token that they had just so they can check off the diversity box and just so they can set, tell their clients like, look, we're diverse. We have like a range of models. And then I realized like, wow, um, it disproportionately affects black American models because, you know, when you look just like regular black, you don't have, you know, this like exotic look to you. You don't have like an ambiguous look to you. It's like, they don't find as much use for you. And that's just what I kept on seeing over and over and over again. Every agency where I looked at their model models pictures and everything like that, it was like that. And I'm just like, I really don't like this. Like, I really don't want to put all my eggs in this basket because there's so many things that need to be reformed. And so, yeah, that's how, that's, that's the one major thing I would change about the modeling industry. What advice would you give to models that look like you? Um, that like trying to become big and everything. Mm -hmm. There's like practical advice and then there's like like motivational words and there's a difference okay because I'll be asking for advice from other people within the modeling industry and instead they give me words of motivation and that's so I'm like I don't like I didn't, I didn't want that one actual advice if I'm gonna give actual advice um show a lot of pictures and with like your you looking your most natural self meaning like no wigs, no weaves, no this, no that, uh, like minimal makeup. Like if you can cut your hair in a shorter cut, they love that. <laughs> like, that's what I would give practically if I was going to be practical. If I was going to be like motivational, I would say you can do it independent. You can for sure book things independently. I have, you know what I'm saying? I ended up on Insecure because of a job I booked independently. 
So um, you can do it independently. Just sign up for cat like cast network or what's that called? LA casting, things like that. Follow a whole bunch of Instagram pages. Now people are like starting to go less and less to agencies and more just to um, specific casting so it's because there's like agencies, right? Where they like represent the model and everything like that. And then there's casting agencies specifically where like they'll just put on Instagram looking for, you know, a 25 year old or 21 to 25 year old black woman for this music video or for this thing, or for this brand. And I think that a lot of brands are starting to go to those sorts of outlets way more than they're starting to use the modeling agencies. Um, at least like when it comes to like the music industry and things of that, like things outside of just print modeling. Um, but yeah, I would just tell them like, don't be afraid to be independent. If you're not being signed, it has nothing to do with whether or not your ability to model, whether or not people find you pretty, it literally has nothing to do. And I wish somebody told me this a long time ago, like you not getting signed to an agency is not because they don't think that you're pretty. <laughs> so don't let like not getting signed, make you think that your look is like bad or you're not, you know, attractive. You don't got it. You might've just been like a little too late and somebody who looks similar enough to you just got there first. And that's more of the case more than, like that's usually the case more than anything. And like, lastly, do not put all your eggs in this basket. Find something else that you can see yourself doing as a job or a career um, that you don't have to rely on modeling. Cause sometimes it's like just so rocky that it's just like, you don't want to do that to yourself. Like, and plus like, I genuinely believe every model is so much more than a model. Like for you to say that you're so much more than a model, like you're like, don't like, you're consensually calling yourself a prop. Cause that's what we get treated like as like a prop, as a mannequin, you know what I'm saying? And like, you're just so much more than that. So don't put all your eggs in that basket. Did you see yourself starting on your own agency at some point in your life? No. Um, yeah, I do. But I don't want it to be one of those situations where it's just like you either um, die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Because I'm just like, I've seen people complain about the modeling, like TikTok accounts that I follow because of like their hot takes on the modeling industry, right? They have all these hot takes and they said they're, they talk about all things that are wrong with it, about the way women are scouted and everything. They start their own agency because of TikTok and they end up literally having the, the same, same requirement, literally the same exact thing, having the same requirements as all the other agencies saying like, oh, well, we, we if you're not this height, this weight, this thing, I'm sorry, we, we don't want to take the risk yet. Like we need to like build our name. So I'm just like, I don't want to start an agency and end up being exactly what I would always complain about. So if I would, it would have to be where I'm successful enough to where I can really do it my way, but I would like to. What do you, you think? Know Oh, my okay. God. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's you, that's you. Go ahead, go ahead, continue. I was going to say, what I really want to do more than starting a modeling agency is starting like a real estate agency in LA to slowly like re gentrify. Oh, no. Like, 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 like an agency specifically for people of color to where, um, like, obviously we will service anybody to where we can start like building neighborhoods across like, Southern California of affluent Black people, of affluent Hispanic people. And you know what I'm saying? Like kind of just like affluent, you know, immigrants and, uh, of different, of within the Black diaspora. No, I used to work in Inglewood uh, as a bank, uh, bank teller and it's completely different than it is now. Like when I was working back then, I was like, yo, yeah. uh, I was like, this is not the Inglewood I know, <laughs> like what happened? Yeah, yeah, I would like to, I would like to do that. Is but that's, a, that's like a global thing that's happening like in the islands and everything. that's yeah. something I would love to be a part of though, like just like, just buying land and everything, rebuilding, make houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, that would, that's something that I would be really interested in. It's just like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, tired of seeing that, like Washington, D.C., like that used to be like Atlanta before Atlanta, like Chocolate City. Now it's like, when you go back there, it's like, what is, like, what is... Is it becoming less Black? Out yes. There? Like, D.C., like, a decade ago, you should be, like, the, like, it's, it used to be called Chocolate City. Like, it used to be, yes. like, all Black people, Howard University, and, like, all the... And now it's just like, okay, what's going on? Okay. New York is being the same way, too. I'm like, yo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, New York is Flatbush is not the same. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's just getting too expensive to live anywhere that's like actually fun to live in. And that's where like, like that's where like gener generational wealth is really kicking our asses. 
<laughs> because that's like really, I feel like the, the, the main cause of it. Yeah. Well, what do you see yourself doing in the future? Like in the next like five years, what do you like see yourself doing? Um, I want to make my own online store. So that's for sure going to happen within the next year or two. Um, but it's going to be like limited drops sort of store, like not one where I'm going to have to like have the type of store we have with Dr. O's now, but that's all I can give away because I don't want no one to take my idea. Um, <laughs> and so that's what like for sure what I see myself doing. Um, you see yourself like doing like screenwriting and everything? That's actually really fun. Yeah, I, I, I started a screen, I started a screenplay last year and I got halfway done with it and then like you know, got busy doing all these other things. But like every single day I tell myself, like, you need to finish it, you need to finish it, you need to finish it. So funny, so funny. So I really want to finish it and then like find a way to get it into Issa Rae's hands. Cause I know she'll find it funny. Like, I know she'll fuck with it. You should just pitch it to the network. Like HBO or like There's many networks. There's so much networks now. There's like back then it used to be like three or four. You can get now. There's like hundreds of them. Like there's Netflix, Amazon. The Am- Amazon seems like they take anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm like. Mm. No, I'd be seeing some shows. I'm like, like, that's why me and my friend Bree, like, we just started making our own script and everything. It's like, yo, we came up with this dope idea, and then we're like, we've seen shows on television. It's like, yo, this is way better than what the on television right now. Like, it seems like they just pick up. There's a lot of bullshit on television. I'm not gonna lie. Say, like, I, that's how I feel too. Like, I'm getting, I'm gonna slowly transition into doing more things in television for sure. My, I'm helping produce this. Um, anime series that's based on the Nigerian, the Yoruba Orishas. And so my cousin is the one writing it and him and his friends. And so we're actually gonna start pitching that really soon. So I'm excited to see where that goes. I think a lot of people would like it. It's a really dope concept for an anime series. So that's, so I'm for sure getting into television within the next five, well, within these five years, I'm getting into it and um, we'll see where that goes. I think it's gonna go well. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to direct more music videos. I've directed a couple, and um, or is that a couple or one? Maybe one. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I really like directing. So like direction is just where I can see like my ultimate like career career being. And yeah. Who do you like? Who do you like look up to like during like film? Like, I know you said Issa Rae. Is there any other people? Oh, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon and Issa Rae are my two inspirations. Like they don't. That's a, these are, they're just two, two greats right there. Yes. I mean, Issa, like where she started from to where she has now, is, is like if you hate on that, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, <laughs> like Issa Rae, it's just like her come up, her journey, like being like I was there, I was watching Awkward Black Girl, like I was there. So like seeing the entire um the whole entire journey is just so it's been less than a decade really less than a decade she did, took that yeah and then and then with um Reese Witherspoon it's just she bodies everything she every single thing <laughs> you, watch you, you watch the morning show you watch the morning show yes I, I watched the so that show is every... crazy that show is I'm like yo yes. I, she should have won something for that I'm sorry she should have won that's something. what I said <laughs> Yeah, especially yeah, like the last three episodes. Watch TV, because I really be we really be watching TV. Okay. She should have the morning show was crazy. I was like, yo, like none nobody from that show won nothing. I was like, how? I was like, that was literally the best show that year. I was like, yo, this show is, is crazy. I was like, this is so good. Um, but yeah, like everything she touches, like she just won't put out anything that's trash. Like little fires everywhere. That was like I'm so too. happy. I came out during. No, she did really good. I love Reese Witherspoon. And I was like, yo, you really pissing me off. <laughs> I was like, yo, like, Reese, you really pissing me off. Like, I'm not trying to like not like you, but you really. I was like, yo, she really be acting though. Yeah, that's and also same thing with Carrie Washington. I'm just like, it was really good to see like her range because I feel like a lot of the time she plays a real like regal boss bitch this, and she still played that. But I'm like. This is the first time, like, you're really unlikable, too. Like, <laughs> like Gary Washington was really unlikable. I'm like, this show is so good. Because in that throwback episode that they had. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm like, why, didn't that, that, everybody? Yeah, that, that's why didn't that win an Emmy? Like, I was like, what are these award shows doing? It deserved one, for sure. That's a, just award shows. It's just, mm-hmm. whatever. I feel like people pay to just do that. Get 
Yeah, I think it's all money now. I definitely think it's I think money. People just it's pay. not based on merit at I feel all. Like they have like a secret bed and whoever bids the most gets. I'd be like, I don't see how this is like. There'd be some if same thing with the Grammys. I'd be like, I don't know, how, like who is this person y'all keep? Like they'd be like nominating Kendrick, da da da, da and then somebody we never heard of when like the rap album of the year. I'm like, how is this even possible? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like one of those things. Like I don't know how we can like disconnect from those things, those sorts of reward shows, because at one end everyone fantasizes about being able to win one of the at least every creative fantasizes about wanting to be able to win one of those awards but like we all know they're bullshit like we all know it like it literally <laughs> doesn't measure who's the best i think player. like back then because it was like a gate gatekeeping like hey if you got one of those awards you're put on now it's just like you can be like somebody that never gets awarded and you still doing millions of records and you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you don't really need that anymore it's like so I don't think they have, the, they hold, I don't think they're going to be holding the same weight, like, when it comes forward. Like, honestly, just to be, some of the biggest artists don't even get nominated. For mm-hmm. <laughs> some of the biggest artists are, are, are slowly starting to be like, I'm not even going to submit my shit anymore. Yeah. Like, you don't have the right to judge my <laughs> shit, okay? Uh, like, yeah. you know, and I think, I personally think that within the next five years, there's going to be a new award show that's going to come up that's going to be, um, but like the Grammys are kind of dying because like yo, you got all these different artists. That there's some artists I never heard of, and they're like, yo, they went platinum. I'm like, I was like, who is this person? <laughs> so it's like, I think yeah. the Oscars are probably gonna be the same because like everybody's gonna have to, the way they have it set up system wise, it's like you can't really, you still have to drop from a HBO or Netflix or anything. Da da da. Honestly, but, what I'm sad about is I really want Black people to re engage and reinvest in the um bt awards when i was a kid the bt awards were like really held hmm. up there but bt awards over here they'd be making fun of blue ivy's hair they'd be they'd be yeah. they went at nikki like they, <laughs> they messed up they messed up they messed up like the grammys like i know they're not gonna give beyonce like album of the year or whatever but they're never gonna be like hey we're gonna make fun of blue ivy's hair we're not gonna come at nikki minaj they're not just gonna give her award but they're not gonna go out who, there who was a person in bt that made fun of blue ivy's hair uh, I think it was um it was I think it was Karuchi actually she did the joke. Karuchi, she, Karuchi. It was oh, at 106 in Park, I think. Mm, oh yeah. That's Karuchi. probably why Beyonce st- like didn't go for years and years. Cause like she would her and Jay-Z would go oh, they would perform, they would be there. And then all of a sudden it's just like they completely stopped doing that. Yeah. Honestly, my favorite worship the VMAs. I seem I, like they, they seem like they get it right. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, this is hey, this person's supposed to win album of the year. They win it. It's like, oh, they seem like they get it right. <laughs> yeah. I was I was a kid, like the VMAs, they would hit. It would be a really fun. And then their performances be different. Like the Janet Jackson performance, uh, tribute to Michael Jackson. I was like, yo, that was crazy. Yeah, I like the fact that they have the Vanguard award. So like any artist that wins that, you really get to see like a whole ten minute long. Program. Yeah. Uh, I, that's my favorite award show. VMAs is just like, yo, I, they're the only one I feel like that get it right. That's a good choice. That's a good also, choice. I think BT should put all their events together. Like they'd be like BT Awards and then there's BT Hip Hop Awards and then Soul Train. I'm like put that shit all. That should be like a whole week thing. Like that's you should put that all in a week. And I feel like people, I think that would be crazy. You have oh, that would be. I miss Rip the Runway. That was always fun to see too, like the like the different black fashion designers that are like doing the damn thing. Like I just feel like BET came, they was at the they was at the top and they just dropped the ball. Like they just uh, dropped no. the ball. No, I don't, they had, I don't know. They had BET the, cut, all those, I don't know what first, what's the first CEO's name? I forgot. The black guy who's bald, Brianna. I think it's Steven. Steven? Something like that. I feel like once he left, things just went downhill. Like it uh, just, no. Uh, the BT doesn't even hit this. I really feel like they should put all those events in one. They should have like the Soul Train Awards on Friday, BT Hip Hop Awards on Saturday, and then BT Awards. That shit would be crazy and it would, it would generate hella money. They need but to bring back College Hill too. Sorry, I just think about all, <laughs> <laughs> all the BT shows. I used to really watch BT all day long. Oh, but BT, need... you watch any anime shows? No. <laughs> Sweet, Sweet. Uh, the only anime show I've watched that I enjoy is Death Note. Literally, it's the only one. What? Yeah. I mean, it's a good one, but I'm like, that's the only... You don't watch Naruto, Dragon Ball Z. Mm-mm. 
Attack on Titan. You gotta watch Attack on Titan. I think the thing is, is I like watching real people. These these are real ass characters. <laughs> no, I'm telling <laughs> you. Yo, these are so real ass characters. <laughs> Same. It just doesn't hit the same as no, like. No, it don't hit the same. You gotta watch. It. You gotta sit down and like actually watch. It. Like this, they anime has the best storytelling. It's not even close. What everybody says, and like at the end of the day, it just can't hit me the same way. No, it hits. This, it hits me more. Like I can literally be like. Yo, I can literally be like, yo, I don't feel like doing nothing today. Then I go watch somebody's speech and anime. And then I'm like, yo, I'm about to do this. Da, 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 da. It's not the speeches. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> Oh no! It's just like it's, it's, it's just it's just the storytelling, and then like there's I think Dragon Ball Z been on for like forty years, so it's like yeah, <laughs> it's like the storytelling is just amazing. Huh? You gotta watch anime. I'm telling you, I, I'm like I'm trying, I'm trying, but like I feel like the only animes I can watch are really just like Death Note and the Boondocks. Because I the Boondocks is this classic. I love Boondocks. <laughs> Boondocks is just different. I wonder how they're gonna do that. I know, I know. I really, um, I love the idea that someone pitched on Twitter where it's just like Jennifer Lawrence should come and play the aunt uh, or the sister of granddad and she'll just take over his role as like the older black person in the show. I'm like, that is an amazing idea. Yeah, just, yeah. But then his son can do his voice perfectly, but then they didn't hire him to do, to play granddad. So I'm like, who can do his voice better than his son? I'm like curious to hear. Granddad's like, Nah, that's I kind of don't want it. <laughs> yeah, without granddad. Like, yeah, it's just weird. Like you just, yeah. it's just weird. I'm okay with his son playing him because I'm like, okay. yeah, that's. I mean, that's always cool. Like, he, yeah. That, yeah, that's always cool. But they're not gonna do that. I'm like, that's. I don't yeah. really care for it. I don't trust y'all. Yeah. But thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. This is a great conversation. <laughs> again soon. Well, not soon because you know that's how podcasts work, but. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, of course. Definitely. Hopefully soon, though. Appreciate you. I'll keep you updated on my life stuff. Oh, and I'll see you, Tony. Huh? Let me listen to the emails that you got for the no, I got you. No, I got you. I'm about to send it to you right afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm about to send it right now, though. All right. Wait, I'm All right. Have a great weekend. You too. Okay. Bye. Where's the bus? Oh, yeah. Where is the bus? You said we used to be a